So yeah, look, uh, firstly, Hassan, just want to say uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, thank you for you know, speaking with me this morning. Um, so we'll just no dive problem. straight in, as I said. Uh, so if you could introduce yourself and uh, your company and your role in the Norwegian seafood industry. Yeah, uh, I mean, um, I've been working in the uh, seafood industry for the last uh, five years, um, at least. And... Um, I do work for Seafood Norway and I do have my own company called Scandisi. Uh, so basically I'm doing two companies because one of the companies are exporter company and one of the companies are um, the marketing company. Uh, you can say like that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not allowed to uh, sell all the products which I have on Scandisi um, through our exporter or um, the company I own because um, they, they, they are not allowed to sell these products. Uh, oh, so, so you're not licensed or you're not certified to sell? No, no, I'm certified to sell anything. And the company Seafood Norway is owned by me and two partners from Norway. And, and okay. basically we are doing uh, ex salmon export, uh, frozen salmon, fresh salmon, and uh, might do some other uh, stuff as well. Uh, the thing with Scandisi is that Scandisi is working, uh, that's my own company, and Scandisi is an uh, agency uh, for a Danish company, a quite big company, uh, which are doing uh, canned food, right? So, uh, right. and also, yeah, and also redfish, canned food, uh, cod, uh, and different kind of seafood. Uh, so I'm using that company as, as an agency. Uh, when people come to my website and want to buy something, uh, then I go to my partners and um, do direct sales from my partners instead of my company. Uh, <clears throat> so basically just marketing some products. Um, and um, my role in this whole thing is that I am a sales manager for Seafood Norway and uh, have been a sales manager for the last uh, three years. Uh, been selling for big companies in Norway, big exporters, uh, which are doing like uh, 30, 40 million uh, dollars per year uh, and uh, have done a great job. But again, I have uh, um, property going on in Norway. So I have a lot of job to do on this property because it's quite big. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm working, you know, with properties, with seafood and also very included in uh, oil trade, oil trading. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the companies constantly. in Norway, all the exporters in Norway, and the companies doing different seafood. So basically, I know everybody here, and I have very good connections in Norway. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, so just a couple of things that I wanted to ask you. Um, Obviously, Norway is renowned for its high quality seafood, you know, especially salmon. Um, just for the people that don't know much about the salmon industry and why it's so renowned, can you elaborate on some key points that contribute to um, Norway producing, you know, exceptional salmon? Yeah, you know, uh, we uh, in Norway, uh, of course, they are one of the biggest exporters of salmon. And uh, we do have wild uh, wild salmon in Norway, which is actually very popular. And uh, so we found out that uh, Norwegian salmon is uh, best in taste because of the location, of the location. Uh, and the water and uh, so on. So uh, I, I guess that um, the biggest farmers, uh, they choose to uh, farm the salmon because it's uh, very good opportunities in Norway and the water is very good and uh, the weather and everything is very good for the salmon. And the salmon is getting um, quite healthy food. Uh, and, um, you know, they are, um, they are exporting all over the world and everybody's quite happy with this quality. It's quite good quality. We have uh, different colors on uh, salmon. Uh, we have colors from... Uh, um, 14 up to 24 and um, it tells uh, how red uh, the fish is or how pink the fish is uh, in Norway you will get everything between 22 and 24 in color which is quite good which is very good um, 
uh, quality, taste, and everything. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing Norway have. It's oil and fish. Yeah, and it's it's all pretty natural as well. Um, isn't it? You can, uh, we can discuss that because, uh, you know, um, it have been some discussions uh, around uh, what kind of um, food, uh, or you can call it, yeah, um, the salmon is getting from Norwegian farmers. And um, not everything is super healthy. I, I won't say it's super healthy fish yeah. because you have the wild salmon. And the wild salmon is, of course, natural, and they are eating natural. Everything is natural, but uh, but of course, farm salmon is a bit different. It's not hundred percent natural, and it's not hundred percent healthy, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. Is that because to be, of the food? To, to be honest, to be honest with you. Yeah, is that the, is that the food that the uh, the farm salmon are being given? Compared to what they get in the wild, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. That's the thing because they're not eating, uh, they're not eating everything uh, which is hundred percent natural, hundred uh, percent healthy. So the fish is uh, different from the wild salmon, uh, but still quite good fish. Now they are uh, now they have some farms in Norway which is uh, land based, right? So it's not in the water; it's outside the water. And right. that kind of uh, salmon is actually healthier. It's better salmon because they are uh, they are fishing against the the water right all the time, um, and they're getting strong and big and um, quite good. They're getting good food. So we have some farms in Norway which are feeding their uh, fish with different kind of uh, uh, food, which is much better. Uh, and this fish is also a little bit more expensive expensive yeah i think the price uh, so i guess yeah the price yeah, is the price you know, is quite I'm, good i'm speaking with john recently um you know the uh the our friend that's going to be coming over to see you soon um it there, there does seem there seemed in the beginning to be a bit of a a difference between what the price they were being quoted was to actually you know the genuine prices that you know you're able to provide um and then obviously it comes down to are the people that are offering these low prices genuine sellers and uh, i think it turned out that they were probably not uh yeah the prices uh, are very different from the producer to the broker you can say exporters it's a lot of exports in Norway, but it does not mean that they own the fish. Uh, yeah. So basically, they will buy from the farm and resell it uh, with their own profit. Uh, that's why you can see different prices from Nasdaq and different prices which, which is given uh, which is given from the exporters. <laughs> yeah. From Nasdaq to LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so basically, Nasdaq prices are always lower, uh, while the exporters are giving higher price because they cannot get the Nasdaq price. Nasdaq price is actually only for the farmers. If they have their own team exporting the fish direct from the farm, they have the Nasdaq price because that, they own the that's fish. An that's a very important point. There is, uh, you know just to gauge how the nasdaq actually get those prices so it's not a, it's not retail it's not wholesale it's the actual farmer's price to retail or wholesale so that's i think that's an important point that people should know yeah th that's the thing and uh, a lot of people say that uh, somebody else is getting a lower price and that's that's uh, always a problem because we cannot offer these prices um, if you contact uh, directly with farms, even sometimes the farms are giving higher price as the exporter does because uh, it's not a lot of fish in the water, right? So when it's less fish, it's higher prices anyway. Um, uh, so we have, I'm working with three, four very big farms and they always ask me, what do you want to pay for the fish? And if I give them the Nasdaq price, they will not accept it 
<laughs> because they have the exclusive contracts, right? So they are selling at lower price, but they are selling a lot of fish, right? So, so yeah. um, when they have something left, then they can offer us if we want to sell to our clients. It's a similar with Ukraine though and grains because uh, obviously we we deal direct with the farmers for the grains and they always ask us what do we want to pay? They don't say, look, I've got five thousand metric tons here in storage. You know, it's this, this, this. You know, they they ask us how much we're going to pay for it, and you can't always look at Nasdaq prices because they don't reflect prices in Ukraine. When one, there could be a shortage. Two, there could be some, obviously we've got a conflict there at the moment. Um, there could be, you know, a ban, say like Poland and Hungary did, or the the uh, transit of grains through the countries. Um, yeah. it, it, I feel like the NASDAQ is mostly based for grains on the US prices, the US markets. Um, but yeah, the farmers, they, even now, uh, and it's happening a lot more now with uh, recent events, suppliers, producers, they all want us to give prices they don't they, they haven't got a price if, if that makes sense yeah but uh yeah but uh, again even if they're asking you for the prices uh they are not going to give you something under the market price anyway uh, because uh they have buyers uh they know where to sell it and uh they know how to sell it uh, when the seafood farm uh, asked me oh, what do you want to pay? Uh, I always try to give them the Nasdaq price, you know, and then they of course, refuse. I mean, you feel, I mean, you're not going to go double or twice as much as the Nasdaq price, are you? <laughs> yeah, of course not. But uh, the problem is anyway that uh, they're just uh, testing us. They j just want to know uh, what their clients are going to pay. And if they f even they have three tons or five tons left, they will ask me, uh, how much do you want to pay? And if I give them the Nasdaq price, they will say, no, we will sell it by ourselves. And they, they sell it. I mean, they, they have clients. Uh, well, actually, I'm the close. farms... They've been yeah, in business the, a long the, the time. Does, they does they, they wouldn't have been surviving if they didn't have buyers. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, the farms uh, does not uh, tell us the right price, what price they're selling at. And they will not. Um, they will not give us the fish if we don't give them the the right price at the right time. Um, so basically, if we give them uh, zero point five dollars, one dollar more than the Nasdaq, then they're willing to sell their fish to us. And there is the problem because the the buyer will say that oh no, it's higher price than what I thought and blah blah blah. And there all the problems start, you know, uh, with the clients. Uh, the clients who always buy uh, on any conditions, uh, they are the right buyers, actually, because they know that they have to buy it. They know that it's less fish, so they have to pay more. Uh, and they know that they don't have any chance to buy somewhere else, so they will buy it anyway. Um, the biggest problem I meet is that um, it's people, brokers, especially from India and Africa. It's two countries um, where the brokers are um, most unprofessional. Uh, and, you know, they're asking photos and they're asking information and all that. But in the end of the day... Documents, past performance, yeah. your yeah, address, yeah, yeah. All of, details. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they will just misuse it, you know, they will just use it for something else. And they will tell other people that we have the seafood, we have the documents, and they will scam somebody, of course. Um, so um, I have stopped that for a long time ago. I, I do not give any anybody any pictures, any information, any website, because I know that they are 100% scammers. And they're just going to, uh, or unprofessional people. They don't know what to do. Yeah, uh, it also happens with inexperienced brokers. Um, you know, they just think that they can just message someone and say, oh, send me all the details and then I'll find a buyer. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. No. And, you know, as uh, if, you, if you can talk a little bit about uh, petroleum as well, uh, I'm I'm connected to Hellenic Petroleum in Greece. This is direct refinery. 
And, yeah. and I, I have a lady inside there, which is purchase manager and export manager. And uh, that's how I know the petroleum business. I mean, uh, I speak to her and she tells me what to do. Uh, so, so it's possible to and you listen. <laughs> yeah. <It's that> easy. <laughs> I mean, she says that Hassan, if you want to work with us, okay, you want to bring us a client. Uh, we, we can do 15,000 metric tons of EN 590, for example, uh, but we will not give you price until the buyer is registered in our system and we have the KYC, we have the past performance from the buyer, uh, if you have done any business in this uh, field. And, you know, <laughs> refinery asks a lot of questions. Uh, and when I see this LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn you know, Oh my God. I wanted to get into that. Yeah. I wanted to get into that. So let's let's dive straight into that. It's crazy. It's crazy. (laughs) It's Indians, Indians, Africans asking for past performance from the seller documents. I I mean, oh my God. They don't know anything about this business. Yeah. And it's getting worse and worse. And what I find is funny is uh, every day I scroll through my LinkedIn feed and um, I see maybe 50 50 brokers all selling similar quantities from the same two places yeah because they read each other's post and they start to uh share it i mean and and then they connect say oh i'll add one dollar or you know can can i post it please (laughs) you know that's why i wrote to you uh, I'm sorry no, no, if I no, wrote no, something no. wrong, but uh, that's why I wrote to you that it's uh, it's full of idiots and unprofessional people. You know, they're just sitting in their village and uh, trying to make money. And I mean, uh, they will not never make money uh, like that. Of course, it's it's uh, impossible. You know, I, I spoke to the biggest uh, oil company in Norway, and uh, they told me that Hassan, we are selling to we are selling our products to Exxon. No, sorry, uh, Total Energies. Uh, BP, ENI, and uh, the biggest guys. And they say that they, these biggest companies, they are, they are marketing our products and they're selling our products. And you could think these companies are so huge that we are not in, in near, you know, we, we cannot do anything. So uh, basically all these, I don't understand how all this uh, oil, gas, everything in Fujairah, in Rotterdam, I I don't understand because these people are already selling it. It's nothing there. It's already sold. Uh, So (laughs) so it's it's nothing coming to Rotterdam. It's nothing lying in Rotterdam. It's nothing here and there. That is the big question. So basically, you will never get any oil in Rotterdam. You will never get anything here and there. It's just scam and time waste. You you will find it out anyway. Yeah, I mean, um, I was contacted by a guy yeah, recently uh, in America. He's spent six months um, trying to find oil for his clients and just met scammer after scammer after scammer who just wanted documents and buyer's information and and he just got led down the garden path too many times. And he told me that he's just giving up on the oil. I said, I don't blame you. It's the same as chicken in Brazil. It's pretty much government to government now. You can't buy chicken to China from Brazil. No, 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 no. But yet I still see the offers. I still see Chinese people posting their partnership with Brazilian suppliers. It's nice. <laughs> It's all, it's all scam. It's all scam. It's all time waste. Exactly. Even the even the brokers think that it's not fake, but it's fake. You know. Um, yeah, because they are the real documents. And the thing yeah. is, what they don't understand is that these scammers have been around for a long time. And in places like Brazil, they either scare or buy the 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 scare the employees or buy the documents from the employees. They could even be family members that work in the plants, and they get the real bill of ladings. They get all the real documents, real contracts, real everything, and they're more than happy to show you it. Because all the Chinese buyers want is they want past performance and they want to see documents. They want to see this, 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 and this, pictures. You send them all of that, and nine times out of ten, they will get scammed. Of course. I uh, I even got scammed by a Norwegian company, a, lot, a quite big company I worked for. 
Uh, so I sold uh, two trucks of uh, salmon, um, big quantity. I was uh, about to get ten thousand dollars as commission for one, uh, two trucks, nice. and they didn't pay me. <laughs> so you see that it's even scam in Norway. Even scam. Even even the big companies are eating money because well, they are hungry. Why, why, didn't they, why didn't they pay you? It's very complicated. I, I really don't know because I know the owner. It's uh, actually called Bergen Seafood. And Bergen Seafood is well known in Norway. Uh, and uh, Mr. John is actually, his client is actually buying from Bergen Seafood uh, because the owner is Chinese. So he can speak Chinese and it, make, it, it makes it much easier for the Chinese to understand. Definitely. Uh, so I was working for him and uh, I sold uh, different uh, products for him. And uh, now I sold these uh, two trucks for him. Uh, and uh, suddenly they didn't pay me because they had, they, I think they had a claim. Uh, last time they delivered something, they had a claim. So they just took my money <laughs> to, to, to cover their uh, loss. Uh, and it was very sad. I mean, it was very sad. I even told John about that, that it was very sad that uh, so big company Norway can uh, do something like that. Yeah, especially um, if you Yeah, you know, I was working for that order on two weeks. I was working on it and uh, they asked me everything. Oh, we have uh, two trucks left. Can you sell it? And uh, I was asking this Norwegian guy. The buyer was Norwegian as well, uh, his company. Uh, so I was <clears throat> talking with him and uh, he was pushing me because he told me that I need this, uh, I need uh, these two trucks. Uh, and when can you deliver? I told him that I can deliver you next Monday. And uh, when Monday arrives, uh, I tell this lady in Bergen Seafood to contact with Mr. Turgrim. And she contacted with him. <laughs> and and uh, day after, I asked uh, Turgrim, the buyer, I asked him, uh, did you get your trucks? And he said, yes, thank you so much for your help. I got these trucks from Bergen Seafood. And then I called this lady and she says that, oh no, he didn't buy these trucks. So ah. I was like, what? He told the buyers <laughs> telling me that he buy these trucks from you. And she's no, 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 something wrong happened. And suddenly, you know, we were just unfriend. I just unfriend her. And his, uh, the, this uh, Yi Guan, which is the boss. Um, and I, I wrote to them. I said that it's very, very sad. We're living in Norway. Uh, basically, none of us have less with money. You know, we are not dying here. <laughs> you see? Right. Uh, if even, You've got a job for them and you should be paid for it. Of course. And even in Norway, if you don't have job, uh, you can you can still live a very good life. You can have a very good life. So I was like very, um, it was very sad for me. It was very, um, uh, I was very disappointed because I mean, I sold these trucks. I was about to get $10,000 as my commission as what I have worked for. Even I, I added the price. I added the price on the top. I had yeah. my commission on the top. So they took my commission on the top. And that's something I don't understand. What happened? Why, why it happened to me? Uh, but you have any, of course, do you have a contract uh, with them or like, any fee agreement or anything signed with them? Uh, no, I had, I had something signed from them from before. Yes. Uh, but I even... Um, I even made a report in police here in Norway and nothing happened. They just closed the case. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it can happen in Norway as well. Well, it can happen absolutely everywhere, uh, unfortunately. And with more and more inexperienced commodity brokers, you know, appearing daily. Unfortunately, the, it is getting a lot worse because they're believing all of the offers that they're getting. And because they believe it, yeah. they sound pretty convincing. And they, yes. they might not be in on it, or they they know it's a bit dodgy or there's something there. But yeah, it's um it's something I'm hoping that these videos um will shed light on and help them just to understand that 
going on LinkedIn and seeing offers and stuff. I mean, these companies, there's no oil, there's no employee from an oil company on LinkedIn giving all of their procedure and the documents and everything that they need trying to sell on LinkedIn. It's it's not happening. But no, no, of course not. Of course not. Uh, okay. I don't understand why people are sitting on LinkedIn and try to sell something. Of course, if you have your own product, you can try to sell on LinkedIn. I have my own products at the moment, which is canned food, like canned mackerel, canned liver, and so on. And uh, if I try to sell that on LinkedIn, uh, of course, it's my product. I can sell it. But but when that's, that's the pro- biggest problem with the brokers. The brokers should never be on LinkedIn, uh, at least not Indians and Africans. I'm sorry to say that, but these people are really wasting time and they're talking like they are the professionals and they don't know anything. And, they don't yeah, know anything. and also the ones that have got the experience now are acting as buyers and just to get the details. So they, they know that they know the lingo, they know what they're saying, they know what they're doing, they know how the business works. Now they just want buyers and sellers details, um, especially the fake buyers. And we've seen a lot of that. Um, Africans, we uh, connected them with Colonel in Ukraine and we waited three weeks for an escrow that they said they sent. And the escrow attorney for Colonel was calling my partner saying we still haven't received anything. And then uh, after two weeks, after three weeks, sorry, uh, like my partner, Igor's called up the... Um, the Africans, but like, you know, what's going on? They're, oh, no, no, we have to go to the bank. Uh, there's a problem our size. Like, yeah, okay. Anyway, bye-bye. <laughs> I'm waste. <laughs> Only weeks to wait for an escrow. I think that... Uh, I think the that, best way- that does, my, my, sorry, the point I was making with that is that damages our reputation now with Colonel, potentially. Yeah. Because they might think, oh, look, we've introduced these, you know, it's a, it was a 50,000 metric ton vessel that they're supposed to have paid a deposit to for Colonel. And obviously it never came. And now it's like, if we want to bring another client to them who might be genuine, Colonel might be like, but after the last time, we probably won't won't take a chance with you. So that's that's the other side that obviously they probably don't really think about or care about the damage that they're doing in the chain. Yeah, of course. And that's why you should never get involved in a chain because... Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's always brokers and people that want their profit and commission and everything first. Actually, they want to get paid first. <laughs> and then oh, they we've want had to... That request. We've had that request. Uh, African yeah, ambassadors. And, and, and then they want work. to sign the contract later on. So, <clears throat> uh, so I think that uh, because I'm also a digital marketer uh, at the moment, and I have been studying that for a while, Um I had a big, I have I had a big loss in 2020 under the COVID. I lost five hundred thousand um, dollars because of my um, uh, big contract to China, actually, and uh, everything stopped. Was that for salmon? Uh, salmon, yeah. Right. Uh, right. So, so I, had, I have seen a lot, and I have learned a lot from LinkedIn. I've seen people, uh, but basically, what I do is that I contact everybody directly by emails uh, and uh, speak to direct companies. Uh, it's much better because uh, LinkedIn will never help you with anything. You know, even I have spoken to professional brokers, uh, professional agents, uh, even they can't do anything, you know. Um, yeah, and that's the thing as well. I mean, by contacting companies directly like that, you find out yourself is, can they supply yes or no? What do, what do you need to give them in order to buy from them? And so on. So you you get all the answers yourself directly yeah. from the horse's mouth. You don't need to go on LinkedIn and listen to someone tell you that there's no chicken no. in Brazil. No, no. BRF you can tell contact you, them. If you want chicken from China, BRF tell you to call their offices in China and you, you buy landed goods. That's the only way yeah. you can buy from BRF, for example. And that's just one yeah. of the examples I can give. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have also, you know, um, by the time I have also learned that I have done business, I have earned money on con- contacting people directly on their website, for example, uh, on their emails. Um, I, I just spoke to a company in Netherlands uh, who wanted to buy cod liver, right? 
And so I spoke to them and I told them that, hey, we have something called smoked cod liver. And they were like, oh, we really want to try it. Uh, so, you know, this is a company, um, company from 1995 I'm speaking to. And yeah. they have been doing business for years, decades. And of course, that's, that's, that's the real company who are going to buy. That's the real people who are sitting there. So uh, that's, and I have the direct seller. So here's the buyer, here's the factory. So I'm in the that, middle. And essentially, that is what a broker does. Or should be. Yeah, and, uh, and even I'm doing that in oil field. Even I'm doing that, I am between Hellenic and buyer. So, but of course we don't find any buyer who can go and buy 50,000 metric tons. Everybody's just speaking. Even I have I know, direct okay, exactly. refinery, but you cannot find buyer. Now we can talk about all this buyer on LinkedIn who is screaming after uh, EN590. Everybody's talking about EN590. I have 15,000 yeah. metric tons. Come on, buy it. Nobody can buy it because... Well, let's see no after this video how many requests you're going to get to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> So prepare to be a uh, message a uh, <laughs> lot. But uh, just uh, regarding your salmon, how can people contact you? How can they buy it? How do you ship it? You know, we are running this uh, this company called seafoodnorway.no and Seafood Norway is a, an ex is an exporter. Uh, everybody can contact me if they want a uh, price for salmon fresh or frozen, uh, they can contact me. And uh, from there, I will send them uh, the daily prices because you're getting weekly prices, actually. Each week, we get price on Friday or Monday, right? And each week, we know how much fish is left so we can sell it. Okay. Uh, and so basically, each, each Monday, I used to give my clients prices uh, for this upcoming, uh, no, for the same week. And basically they're paying me on Monday already. They're paying me on Monday. So, it. yeah, so we have, uh, we have uh, the money in our account on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so we are ordering fish already on Tuesday. And the fish is slaughtered on Thursday, right? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday and Thursday, it's, it's, it's normal that they slaughter their fish. Uh, so you have a couple of days to get your payment. And you have uh, Wednesday, especially Wednesday, to order the fish from the farm. So the Thursday, uh, they will slaughter the fish. The fish will be on airport Friday, right? So on Friday, it will go by the plane to the destination. It takes uh, from from the farm to uh, the, the the destination. It will take uh, between uh, two days, two and three days. Okay. So what's your and biggest market? Uh, you know, the biggest market at the moment for me will be <clears throat> will be China. Uh, okay. Because, uh, yeah, because I'm also working with a very good guy in Norway. He's doing crabs, king crabs. And he have a very good client. Uh, we together, actually, because I, I'm his partner as well. He, he, live, uh, he live in Oslo, so it's only one hour from here. Uh, okay. And we, we, want to, we want to send 27 tons of salmon each week uh, to China. Wow. So that's quite a big order. Um, and we are working on it. Yes. So the market is actually, China is a very good market because I would say that Chinese people are very hard to work with because they have a lot of questions. Uh, they can suddenly call you mi middle of the night. Uh, they can, you know, uh, they, they think that, uh, 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 that we in Norway, we are working all the time. That's not, that's not like that because in you know, Norwegian think everyone people, outside of China is working 24 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Norwegian people, they have their time. It's eight in the morning to four, four o'clock. Uh, and that's it. You cannot talk with them 
after that. But uh, export companies like us, you can talk with us uh, on the morning and on the evening. Uh, yeah. So I would say that Chinese people, you know, they, they buy it. They don't talk too much. I mean, they, they don't discuss too much. Uh, they, they know that uh, this, this fish is good. It's a good quality. It's the right farm they're buying from. It's the right packing station. Uh, because you know that uh, packing stations and farms, they also have reputation, right? So <clears throat> when a Chinese buyer, he wants to buy something from a farm, he will ask you from the farm number. And if you give him the farm number or packing station, he will right away know that it's a good quality. So he will say that, okay, no problem. We can pay you and we will buy it. That's it. So yeah. uh, basically Chinese... So it's quite simple then, really. Yeah, Chinese clients are very good. Oh, that's fantastic. So, well, hopefully when John arrives, uh, they buy everything that you can supply. Yeah. And we'll have a good Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are working on it, and uh, and uh, you know, it's a lot of farms uh, which have uh, buyers in China. So the Ch it, it's something called China fish and China packing. So uh, the 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 China fish is made for sashimi, right? So sashimi grade, it's a different kind of uh, because they are making sashimi in China. Yeah. Uh, so so basically, we will give them a good grade. Uh, a, a, of course, superior quality, and um, and big fish. They want big fish like uh, six plus, seven plus, eight plus, so on. Uh, yeah, and and they will it. buy it. But it takes well, uh, it takes a couple of days to to take the order and and send the fish. I mean, it's not that difficult. No, that's really good. Okay, well, look, uh, Hassan, I think that's uh, pretty much covered quite a lot. Um, I know it's Sunday and it's still early there for you, so you probably want to get out and uh, start working on your property. But, um, look, I appreciate again for you to come on. Uh, we'll catch up again maybe in, in a month or so. Make sure, you know, check in, see how you're getting on. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll get a lot of business from this. Thank you so much. I, I, think, I think you're doing a great job and uh, keep it up. I mean... I mean, you have seen the same thing I have seen on LinkedIn. And uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, we both know uh, how to work uh, in a different, on a different level. We cannot work like these people on LinkedIn. That's, that's just bullshit. <laughs> so, so let's work. You, and, you, can't uh, think... you can't sustain that long term. It's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And it's actually, I think LinkedIn should do something with that. They should, absolutely, absolutely they should add people. They should add people to LinkedIn uh, who have registered companies, for example. Yeah, Not and just I also, anybody I also from Africa, Africa Pakistan, should, India. People should register with their IDs or passports. So, look, Hassan, we'll speak soon and uh, mate, enjoy the rest of the day. You too. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye bye. You soon. Bye bye.